Want to see our favorite <laughs> exhibit at the Museum of the Bible? Hang on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. And I'm Jamie. And we are hanging out here at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. It's surprising how much incredible stuff you can find in this building. Yeah, the Bible was written a long time ago. It's an old book. But some people might think that because it was written so long ago, it has no relevant lessons that apply to current day life. Is it still useful to us? Does it still matter? We believe that the Bible is alive because the story isn't finished yet. And this week, we're going to be talking about how the Bible still speaks to us today. Today. Like today. Che like, check your calendar. I mean, yesterday today. and today. Yeah. And the day before. And the day after that. And after that. To get to the heart of why it's still so relevant for us today is the truth that media changes, struggles don't. Sure, you may think the Bible won't have anything to offer about technology or social media or current events, but the underlying emotions are similar to the ones experienced by people all throughout Scripture. We all have the same issues of comparing, competing, worrying, envying, getting angry, being afraid, and tons of other things that get in the way of us making wise choices. But through God's Word, we find an unchanging God and time-tested truth. Pop quiz, museum rats! <laughs> Museums are filled with things you might want to touch, but don't do it! Don't touch the valuables, they are off limits. This is a national treasure and you're not Nicolas Cage, so leave the exhibits alone. Just ask the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. In 1990, two men posing as security guards stole several paintings. How many works of art did they steal? Was it A, 15, B, 13, C, 4, or D, 24? If you said B, you're not only a smarty pants, but you might be a sneaky little beast. Did you take those paintings? Because they were never recovered. Do you have those paintings? They're still out there. And there is a $10 million reward for anyone who helps find them. So tell me if you took them, because I want that money. The weird thing was that the stolen paintings were of various values. They weren't all greatest hits. Some were considered priceless, while others weren't. We do that, don't we? We say that this work of art isn't as arty as this one. We assign certain value to certain things. So why do we do this with the Bible? We say that it's so valuable that it's sacred. Why do we say this about this particular book and not other books? Well, as followers of Jesus, we believe that God has breathed life into the words of the Bible, which makes it active, alive. It's unlike any other text because it actually puts us closer to God's presence. Yes, it is a bunch of words that were written by real humans in real history with their very real cultural context, and it's also more. It's a combination, a mashup, if you will, of God's divinity with our humanity. It's a limitless God speaking through our limited words so that we get to know him better. That's something truly sacred. That's something valuable that you can touch. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. Here at the Museum of the Bible, there's an exhibit dedicated to how the Bible has impacted fashion, literature, music, and more. Yeah, the Bible has global influence. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, thank you, mystery hand. It's running taboo time. Pick up a card and hold it up to your head. Your partner will give you clues but cannot use the five taboo words on the card. Once you guess the word correctly, run to the next card and pick it up. The clock is ticking to see who can answer five cards the fastest. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right, let's go. Okay, uh, I almost said the word. Uh, not a hill, but a... Valley. Um, go up. Uh, a Not bigger a, hill. Yes. Mountain. Yes! Okay. Oh! Yes! <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay, it is one of our presidents, and it is something Abraham. that has... Uh, nope. Uh, it is um, something that has been put up oh, in, in honor of him. Statue. Uh, so something very similar to that. A monument. Yes. A, okay. Uh, Whenever your car is dirty, you you want clean to clean it. Monument. What's clean. another What's another word for clean? Uh, cleanse. Another word. Wash. Yes. A monument wash. Oh, no. oh monument. The president. Oh, Washington. Yes. Now Washington. Monument. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, it is sweet. It is a. Chocolate. It is something that you Honey. eat. Yes. Okay, uh, oh, um, oh, we were talking about the measurements the other day of this. Uh, cubits. Uh, so, uh, it went out on Inches. the water. Oh. And it saved 
it saved f furry things. And it's a guy in the Bible. And he oh. built. Oh, Noah! It, no. Noah's Ark. Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so you would see the Ninja Turtles on this. A pizza, Subway, uh, uh, a wave, you would uh, a rooftop. see their a episodes shadow. on this. Oh, a TV. Uh, the longer version Television. of that. Television. You got it, we're okay, done. What's my time? 207. 207. Hey, that's really good. All right. Yay. The Hebrew Bible is a collection of scrolls written and assembled over a 1,000 year period by the Israelites written in Hebrew. The first significant translation was done in Greek. It was called the Septuagint, and this translation was widely used among followers of Jesus. Jesus claimed that the story of the Hebrew Bible was coming to its fulfillment through him, and his followers wrote about this claim in a new collection of writings called the New Testament. They were written in Greek. These two collections became the sacred writings of Christianity, the Bible. There have been many translations of the Bible over time, and here are three important ones. The Latin Vulgate was created for the Catholic Church. The Wycliffe Bible first brought the Bible into popular English, and the King James Bible was created as the official Bible of the Church of England. The entire Bible is now translated into over 700 languages. The New Testament by itself has been translated into an additional 1,500 languages. This all makes the Bible the most translated literary work in human history. Sometimes we take for granted that we can pick up or download a Bible and read it in our own language. But can you imagine what it would feel like if everything you ever heard about God was in a language that was foreign to you? Today, there are more than 3,800 languages that have little to no access to the story of God in the Bible. That's one billion people living in what is called Bible poverty. We have the tools. This is a solvable problem. For example, there is an organization called Illuminations, which is the largest alliance of Bible translators in the world. They are working hard to provide access to God's Word in all languages by 2033. The Bible is all about God's incredible love and His wonderful persistence to be close to us. But He doesn't work alone. Jesus tells us to not just hear what He says, but to do what He asks. He asks us to take part in sharing the good news with the whole world. We work together. God and Jesus did the making and saving. We do the living and sharing. So what's your part? How will you join in to the story God is telling? The Bible is a book that challenges us to live out what we read in the world around us. Because this book is alive. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. 2 Timothy 3.16. So my favorite exhibit here at the Museum of the Bible is the History of the Bible exhibit. They have these giant scrolls of basically how the Bible was originally written on. Like they are huge and long and I just love being able to see uh, the Bible in the form that Jesus studied the Bible. It's just really, really cool to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you my favorite exhibit, but first, one more round of taboo. Let's do it. Okay, woohoo! And we're going. Okay. Fashion. Oh my gosh, okay, uh, mix the sound. Oh, uh, bell, music, uh, musical instrument. Okay, so the statue of? Liberty, Liberty Bell. Yep. Whoa. Uh, this one. Oh, okay, and oh geez, okay. All right, so gossip. Uh, rumor, gossip. Uh, gossip literature. Gossip, gossip uh, uh, magazines, newspapers. Yep. Oh, great. A beverage you consume typically Strong. in the morning. Uh, orange juice. Other one. Uh, apple juice. Other one. A uh, beverage you, uh, coffee. Okay, you add it to cereal. A uh, milk. Uh, okay. A vessel you put food. A uh, basket. Woo! Dennis the Menace is weapon of choice. Uh, slingshot. Ah! What's that time? for you, Taboo Championship. Oh, hey, 
Allie. Hi, what you doing? Well, I'm, I'm reading your Bible. What does it look like I'm doing? Well, I know, but why are you reading my Bible? Don't you have access to like dozens of digital translations? Mm, hundreds, actually. If you count all the different versions and all the different languages. But here's my problem, Allie. The Bible is the most translated, the most reproduced book of all time, and I can't figure out why. I mean, I see that it's got answers and godly advice and wonderful stories inside, history and poetry and miracles and some real controversial stuff, but it's just a book, right? What makes it so special? Well, there's no other book like this. This book is alive. Alive? I don't mean this physical book like this one right here, more like what it contains. All right, cool. So this is 2 Timothy 3.16, and it says, God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. Hmm, I think I've heard this one before. Uh, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yeah. Uh, another translation, doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction. Okay. Uh, how about a different translation altogether? Para la enseñanza, reprensión, corrección, y para la instrucción en justicia. Yeah, I know that verse, Ali. I know all the verses. I know the whole book, cover to cover, and every commentary and historical cross-reference ever recorded. But I still don't get it. Okay, so here's the thing. You can know a ton of facts about the Bible and still not really get it. Because this is more than just a list of things we should or shouldn't do. It's more than an instructions manual, or a book of inspirational quotes, this is meant to change something in us. In fact, the theologian N.T. Wright once said, God wants us to be people, not, well, puppets. Mm, none taken. And to, to love him with our minds, as well as our soul and our strength. We learn stuff from the Bible, but we also grow closer to God through the Bible. That's why it's alive, because it's always changing us. And because the story isn't finished yet. Uh, but, but it finishes on page 1,566. Well, yeah, well, this does, yeah. But remember, the Bible is the story of God and his people. Well, we're God's people, and God is still moving. When we follow Jesus, we live our lives the way he taught us, and we share it with other people. The Bible is alive because the story isn't finished yet. We get to climb out of our seats and join in. Hmm. So uh, you're saying that knowing all of the facts that there are to know about the Bible won't show me how the Bible is alive? Exactly, exactly. To truly understand how the Bible is alive, you have to choose to become part of the story. Whoa, whoa, that is deep. That is so deep, Allie. My goodness, is anyone recording this? Honestly, could someone record? I'm just kidding, I record this. I record everything. Everything? Well, sure. You want to know what kind of cake you had at your five-year-old birthday? No, no, that's okay. I think I'm going to go call my mom back uh, and probably change my security settings. So, bye, Bubbles. Ah, bye, Allie. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'll see you in a second when you pick up your phone. I don't need your help. Bye. For those of us who follow Jesus, we have a book. It isn't a theology book. It isn't a rule book. This book is a story the story of God and humanity, a story Jesus said he was fulfilling. This book contains poems, riddles, letters, puzzling narratives, and new ideas. Yet, throughout it all, this book is full of the breath of God. For those of us who follow Jesus, this book is a treasure. This book is a tree of life. This book is a page turner. Turn the page with us. So you know how adding potato chips to your sandwich makes it that much better? Yeah. I feel like the Bible Project is that for me. I mean, they have such amazing visual videos that really supplement my Bible reading. Yeah, and if you haven't checked them out, make sure you do and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Okay, so here's my favorite exhibit. Okay. It was the Nazareth exhibit. Yeah. Yes, right? Feels like you step back in biblical times. The environment, they also have people dressed up in biblical clothing, and they have tools that people used back then, and also food as well. It's really neat. Yeah, it's fully immersive, and I think that that is a great choice, Jamie. Thank you. So how about you? Do you feel like the Bible is useful in your life today? The story isn't finished yet. You're a part of it, so don't sit on the sidelines. Yeah, get active with your Bible. Study it, watch videos, live it out. It still has global impact today. 
the Bible is alive. So share it. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. <laughs> oh. Okay, it has to do with clicking a button. Okay. Uh, ooh, oh, sub subscribe. Yes, 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 yes. To the Loop Show channel and to the Bible Project, of course. Yeah, tons of really great visual videos about themes and stories of the Bible that just make it plain and simple to understand. So check them out and subscribe over there and over here. And while you're at it, the Museum of the Bible. Do three subscribes.